Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. Uh, really quickly, if you were heading over to that site, uh, if you are at all interested in any of the content that I'm doing on YouTube, there's a quick and handy dandy little link at the top that says tutorials. You can click that guy and I've done my best. I know it's still a hot mess because there's so much there. Uh, not in a conceited way, just that there's the organic way the show works. There's not much p planning when it comes time to uh, sitting down and uh, figuring out 100% how the videos are going to get run, so there's some overlap. However, if you go there, I've tried to do my best to break them into chunks uh, for specific topics, manga studio, Photoshop, inking, penciling, blah, 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 anything to do with comics mostly, and some illustration stuff, you can head on over there and hopefully you can click a couple links there and maybe you'll see something you like. I just want to say thank you again to my patrons, you guys are the best, you guys are um, few and far between, and I, I just can't thank you guys enough. On Monday, there's a new show that I put up there for my patrons, uh, it's Sketchbook Mondays, where we just sort of do like a, fill in our sketchbook, our digital sketchbook, and I'm using my patrons uh, with their feedback and comments and stuff, what, what, what are they interested in doing, what, what do we want to do for our sketchbook that week, and uh, uh, the second week's video went up yesterday, or Monday I should say, and it was dealing with drawing the head, so if you guys aren't patrons, that's cool, you can go over to patron.com slash Jonathan Rector, and if you didn't want to do any of that, that's fine too, I'm going to release those videos that are already up there a month later up on YouTube, so there's no fear, or I don't want to say fear, I always make it sound, I have this feeling that people people get scared or something like that, but it doesn't matter, you can head on over there, all that stuff will be free for you guys eventually too, uh, and I'm having a blast, it's a lot of fun doing that, and uh, so today we're going to do some double page spreads, and I've got some information about Worlds in Peril to share with you guys as well, uh, but there was one question that I wanted to address right now that was asked, and I, and I just saved it here just to uh, bring it up here because I may as well just record it, and it's our, our good friend Lars, and he's asking, uh, Jonathan, is there a specific reason why you don't do this heavy black rendering anymore? So what you're seeing here is just a sketch, I, I try my best anyway, um, before these live shows go, I do a... Uh, pre-show, I guess, uh, that's just to get warmed up, you know, get the rust off and just kind of very, like, itty-bitty uh, conversation happening with you guys. It's mostly just get some music going again, just get in the zone and just draw, like, this sort of thing here just for fun. It's just scribbles and stuff. If you guys were here during the pre-show, you saw how I built it up. Uh, but just to specifically address your question about the shadows, that the reason why lately I haven't been doing a lot of this necessarily is uh, just deadline-based. Um, Worlds in Peril is a fantastic project, glad to be a part of it, I'm glad you guys have been around, geez, since the beginning of it, and uh, you guys are getting some, f giving me some feedback from it, and that's amazing. But again, deadlines are deadlines, and uh, so I figured I could just sort of get around doing all this heavy shadow, because what happens was, what I like to do, guys, uh, if it was up to me, and you know, you have you ever been in that zone where you're just like, maybe drinking coffee, tea, or water, or something like that, and you just sort of like, you know... You're just relaxing or you're in the zone or just something's happening where time kind of just drifts a little bit. And I find personally, when I get in that mode, this is sort of where I default to with like some rendering and some shadows. Uh, but it takes time, uh, especially with what we're going to be doing today, working on. I can uh, go ahead and sh uh, show you guys here. Uh, you guys have seen some of this here. Uh, it's a hot mess. We're going to sort of organize this up here, but it's a double page spread. Now to ink this totally uh, like this and even more, this, this let alone this kind of style, is it's pretty simple. There's not like a lot going on once you kind of understand where things are going. Uh, however, in saying that, there will be some shadows and stuff that I'll put in here because it just helps pop things like that. Uh, so it's really just a time thing. The other thing that it sort of rolls into is the feeling and the mood to help your story telling for your storybook or your comic book, right? It's all about story. Sometimes heavy shadows in, let's say, um, we're all actually talking about Supergirl a little bit, uh, the new, what's it called, uh, trailer for the TV show, I guess, was released today or something. But Superman, and in my opinion, Superman book, usually, if it was up to me, the artist wouldn't have a lot of shadows in their work. Uh, it just starts to make things, it, it, it's sort of like Superman to me is that kind of character, he's the sun, he's happiness, he's good, you know what I mean? And when you start going into the shadows, that's where I kind of like, where everybody starts to see it, is Batman. Just cake Batman in black and, and rendering, and just rendered out. That way when you have those two characters kind of next to each other, right, they sort of like uh, contrast each other and it looks good, you know? But that's not to say you can't draw one or the other in another style, right? This is just personal taste. So again, that's sort of 
wow, a really long-winded, <laughs> a really long-winded way of saying all that stuff. So. Uh, there's another, uh, you guys are sort of talking about Noah's, uh, has anybody seen any of Dave Finch's Noman workshop vids worth buying? Uh, I own them myself. I think they're wonderful videos. Uh, I would recommend searching David Finch on YouTube. He has, uh, I think, a head and some other stuff on there. Check that out. If, if that sort of stuff whets your appetite, those DVDs, they're a little bit more better. I would recommend, though, I bought these other ones. Go to, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but just search David Finch's uh, official website. And he has uh, updated, I would, I would say they're updated, uh, videos and instructional DVD, or downloadable videos anyway, uh, that I've bought as well of him showing how he works. I would recommend getting those ones instead of the Noman ones. Unless you can get the Noman ones cheap, or you can look around online. Uh, as for the Stephen uh, Platt, I believe his name is, I own that one as well. Uh, I have it right here. That one was actually really cool. Um, it's a very old school way of doing penciling. It does work digital, but it's it's a uh, it is a little dated. But the content is still good. Um, it, I would recommend it if you want to learn about rendering. Um, and he has a very unique style of rendering. It looks almost like everybody else is rendering, but his way of ap applying it is pretty cool. And he does this sort of like thumbnails that are really small, and then blows them up with like uh, how they used to do it back in the '90s, I'd say. Uh, with uh, what are they called? Photocopiers. So check it out if you dig that. But yeah, I, I'd give them thumbs up for sure. If you guys are interested. Yep, the horse and the woman. Yep. Oh, Finch was drawing tits for a woman, right? I'm speaking of the horse. Let's switch with Finch and woman. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, that's the one. Again, I would recommend just go to his website and get those ones. Those ones are a little bit uh, better. Oh yes, Matador Studio, the manga dude. I would say, and I. If we're talking about the same guy, I bought that one as well. Uh, that one is, jeez, uh, what is his name? Uh, I can't look at the chat when I'm trying to think of this. I can hear his voice in my head. Hi, everybody. This is, damn it. Pat Lee. Ah, thank you. Pat Lee. Is it Pat Lee? No, I don't think it's Pat Lee. Let me see, because I have it on my computer as well. I know this has nothing to do... Alvin Lee, that's it, thank you. And Alvin Lee, I love that guy's style. And even his video is really cool, because it's sort of the same thing where they... All these guys back in the day with the penciling, and I did it too, I tried to do it, um, where you start off with these thumbnails that are small. You can even check on YouTube, I show you guys how to do this with just a basic printer if you don't have uh, an 11 by 17 printer. Uh, starting with a small thumbnail, scan it in, blow it up on 11 by 17, which is two eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper, regular paper that you can print out, and you just tape the back of it. And for better or for worse, it pretty much blows that s thumbnailed sketch up, and then you sort of just loosely put that on Bristol, and then you pencil from there. But he hammers out two friggin' pages on his man. He, that was awesome. He does a pinup and a page. Fantastic video. I I'd actually recommend that one. Uh, more so than the Finch and the Platt ones, mostly just because that one's specifically for comics. I find uh, Finch's and Platt's, they're for illustration, even though that can be like cover work, let's say. But they're all wonderful videos. All right. So, let's. Uh, what's going on with this? So, we've had a little bit of an update. I feel I may as well share it with you guys and stuff. So you guys can yell at me and uh, <laughs> all that good stuff. But uh, what's happening now with Worlds in Peril is uh, some stuff has happened. I'm not sure if I can really share it or whatever. I don't want to say certain things that somebody, you know, whatever. But uh, the deadline has got pushed up. What else is moving here? Oops, I got the wrong thing selected here. The deadline's been pushed up uh, pretty drastically to the point where I might not be able, well, I, I know for sure I won't be able to do all four double page spreads, which is a, is a bum out. Uh, for a couple reasons. One, I really enjoy, I enjoyed being able to leave those little pinups that I was doing uh, and get back to this sort of thing. Even though this isn't really like a comic book page, uh, there's some comic book-esque qualities to it that uh, I was really pumped to get back into. Uh, there's even one of the double page spreads where I try to incorporate a little more uh, comic book to it. So I put some panels in there and stuff like that. I was really excited to do that. Uh, however, um, my well, mostly because of myself and how long this project has gone over what I originally quoted. Uh, some things now you can't go back. You can't get time back, right? So that's a bum out. Uh, so uh, the way it looks is this pinup here. 
uh, is the most important one. And if I can get a second one done, that would be fantastic. But the way it's looking is this might be the last piece here, and then um, we're going to be done with this. And it's, it's sort of bittersweet. Sort of bittersweet. Uh, the reason why this one's actually so important is you can't really see it. It's in green in the background. But there's a building that all the superheroes are pr sort of protecting and fighting around called the Sentry Box. And this is one of the um, Kickstarter people that helped fund it. They get they wanted their store in a double page spread, so they're going to get that there. Then over here, we're going to have two people that uh, I think they're called Millionaire Playboys, some people that just uh, donate a little extra to the Kickstarter. Uh, they want their faces in here. So we're going to put two of them in here, being protected by my favorite character, the Outsider. Uh, just this massive. It's Imagine the way I look at him, and I, I've gone back and I've looked at the art, <laughs> and. Uh, the way I've drawn the Outsider, he just gets bigger and bigger as I draw him. And almost now at the end, the way that I think about him, which is radically different than how I started thinking about him, <laughs> was the Hulk. But he's got the Hulk with four arms. He's the Hulk with four arms, and that's just insane. But I just love it. Good stuff. So we're going to just keep plowing through here. And what I'm actually going to do, this this might be interesting, is I'm only doing pencils in here, or like this, this sort of style. And then I'm going to bring this into Manga Studio 4. And I'm going to do the inking in that, which might be interesting. Uh, mostly because these double page spreads are really ki killing my computer. Trying to save takes a while. All kinds of bad news bears is coming from it. So I just want to move this over here a little bit because I'm just looking at the background and I want to be able to show more of the building. Yes, yeah, Hulk with the Grook. <laughs> style head for sure all right so we got here we're going to be putting some cars on the side here how many here is we got one two three four five so we're going to need another one uh i forget the, i have them in green here but sometimes it's a little harder to see yeah maybe we can uh, we'll figure out yep uh manga studio four I know it might sound a little weird. That's time. <laughs> That's right. That is time travel. Even though I just said, it <laughs> uh, well done. All right, where can I put this other character? I kind of want to have. What could we do here? We're supposed to have some spaceships up here, and it's a lot of things are going to start getting pretty crowded, uh, as if they're not crowded enough. So I'm going to have to start shrinking some things up. Hmm. I think I had her back here. Uh, if you guys remember, there was the one design I was doing with her uh, where she transformed into a hippo. And even though that's not really what was instructed, I think it'd be kind of... It'd be cool. And I don't think it... It's definitely not what they were asking for, but it, I feel like it's more in line with the character. And I don't know if you guys get like this, but sometimes when you start drawing, and I know I talked about this, talk like this with the, uh, the standard when we were working on that, it was um, after a while, like the characters, like you'll get the script from your client, your writer, whoever, or yourself, maybe you wrote it at one point, but it's got to be the same with writing, you know, like I'll hear a lot of writers, they'll say things where eventually the characters start talking to you, you know, and what I find that happens is even with, uh, let's say Jessup King, that was uh, another one that I can talk about that I've done some writing on the side, but nothing outside of a mini comic with him, but writing him is one thing. And then as you draw your characters and you stick with them, they start to talk to you in a different way with art, right? Like you can start to just body language and things that you would think that they would do that um, maybe your writer or whoever else didn't come up with. Like they just couldn't see that, you know? And it's a little different, but that's sort of what's happening here is I can see these characters in my head, how they would sort of act in a certain way. And even though the script says one thing, I feel like this is probably the better call. And ultimately, the client's always right. So they're always right, even if you don't think they're right. <laughs> but if they're good clients, you, you know if you have good clients, if uh, they at least take your ideas into consideration, they don't just blow them away. You know, as like a waste of time. So I'm trying to find a way. I want to show the head of the hippo, but I just don't want to leave too much. I'm going to have to grab some reference for sure. So every day you get the lovely chance to draw a friggin' hippo. So go 
here with it. I know we're going to need another character here. Maybe we can do that one right now. I have them in green. They're in the back. You can't really see it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit of this other cat here. So what I'll do is I'll turn off this and let's go ahead and draw this guy here. Roughly about the same size as that guy. Now, I don't want to get too dramatic with the heads. I want to keep them pretty, uh, pretty safe since these are supposed to be real people's faces going on them, right? Uh, so I want them to feel like they get their their money's worth as well as they're not confused as to where they are. You know, I don't want them to feel like they overlooked themselves in the book or something. Careful not to give him a superhero body. Maybe we'll put like a little hand here. So what's new with you guys? You guys, uh, the show's open for you guys as well, right? So if you, maybe you are new to the show, if you have any questions or if you need help with anything, by all means, please ask it in capitals. And if I can uh, help you out, I will. Uh, please don't be shy. Uh, like I always say, if uh, you got a problem, there's a high chance that somebody else is going through the same thing. Uh, so if maybe they're on YouTube and they weren't able to make it during the live show, and uh, you asking the question might be able to help them out. Get his arms here. Uh, all right, give me a second here. Just off screen here, I'm going to grab my reference. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so that's the one cat. Let's get this other dude. Open. Oh, cool. I didn't know that would happen. All right, cool. So... Uh, Millennium Man is saying, just finished the Philadelphia Comic Con this past weekend. Even got your portfolio seen by Marvel Comics. Oh, awesome. Uh, would you mind sharing what they said? Yeah, mirroring what Lars said. What was the general feedback you got? I'd have to imagine if you're talking about it. it means uh, Regardless of what they said, you had a good time. Came back with some good stuff. This guy's got a little bit more of a round face here. You got a pretty simple shirt here. My own advice? Oh, you're talking about the uh, blocks? Yeah, the only reason I'm not doing it here is um, this is just like a traditional three-quarter shot. These guys, these two guys here, I need them to be easily recognizable. So I'm not doing, um, trying not to do complex shots. So in keeping with that, I, I agree to what you're saying. And thank you for bringing that out. Um, let me just get this back here. But uh, this sort of shot, like I'm looking at a reference off screen too, so um, most of what I'm drawing here, I already know where we're going with it. And these are just your like placement stuff uh, until we get to the eggs. Uh, 
Uh, last you talked about Tilt for non-Wacom users. Here's the PDF that shows how to set it up. Okay, well, thank you, Matador. I'm just going to copy that. Just paste it, and I'll check that out. Be interested in seeing that. I don't. I don't know. Uh, does the Does the tilt add anything? Do you know, or is it? I actually just got um, the official Huion pen that comes with the tablet that I got. It stopped working, and I was using the replacement one that they give you as well. Or at least when I bought it, I got a second one. Uh, it was It was a different one. And uh, I got used to that, so this one finally came in, and this is one that just needs to be plugged in when it's charge charging into like a USB. It doesn't need a battery, uh, which is funny because like I don't know what the hell Wacom does with theirs, where it's like, where like some styluses don't need pens and some do. I don't understand. Like I, I'm totally dumb when it comes to how that technology works. I just haven't looked to find out. I just find it wild that some of this works like that. Anyway. So I got it in today, and I've just messed around with it. And the cursor actually feels much closer to the screen, unless I'm just getting used to it, or uh, it is just a, a different kind of pen. But this one I, I, I really like. It's very light. It's very it's very nice. It's not really adding anything to me, but for some people who like the tilt, I guess it would use for shading. Okay, I'll, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, Millennium Man is saying, just to uh, update you guys on YouTube here, uh, my portfolio was more of my digital coloring work, which he liked. It reminded me to let the artwork speak and scale back the special effects. He also said to focus on making my drawings the best they can be instead of worrying about speed. I'll pause it. Yep, that's uh, really good information to get back. Equalizer is saying the Huion Pen one is rechargeable battery. It's the uh, the Pro Verda. Oh, okay. I, I didn't. Apparently, I don't <laughs> research things. Sorry about that. The other one is the old style, which is uh, which you replace the battery, which makes it heavy. That's exactly right. Yep. And so far, this new one doesn't do that squeak. If you guys remember my my pet mouse that I was having a little while every time I would draw, uh, the mouse hasn't shown up yet. So maybe there was just something faulty with that. Uh, pen that I had got sent to me, which would make sense because it, it just stopped working, right? So. I'm not very good at drawing uh, portraits of characters. It's definitely a weakness I have. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, there's some key information here that this guy will be able to recognize that it's him. I hope. You're on the... <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I have had, I I was I'll be saying this as well in my six month review of the Huion in that video, uh, but the experience that I've had with them with any kind of like when I was struggling with the drivers for a little bit, and uh, you know considering returning it, because I was just sort of getting like I I was at my at wit's end, man. It was just like this is insane. Sometimes I had to unplug all my USB ports just to plug it in to get it to work, like just. Nobody would want to work like that, right? And it's not being picky or snobbish because you're spending a certain amount of money. It's just, I, I think there's just a little certain quality that people are just used to nowadays. Uh, especially, like, I had the Cintiq, right? The small one. And I still love it. I think it's a fantastic project, product. Uh, 
I, I recommend it wholeheartedly. I uh, just this one I wanted the space, and it was just sort of like, uh, what am I comprom uh, compromising here, right? Like the control, blah blah blah, and the, the pen, all this stuff, and it was just it's getting over over overburdening. And eventually, you know, it it settled down. Everything now is is more than perfect, more than happy. And you're right, yep, uh, they've been more than courteous and responsive and uh, all that stuff, so. Pillowhead saying, I've been drawing so much today, I think I got carpal tunnel. That's no good. Uh, Digital Drew Draws, hey buddy. Uh, hi Jonathan, I just found your videos and I've been trying to power through a lot of them. Oh, thank you so much, thank you. You have probably answered this question like a bajillion, bajillion times, but any good books or video series uh, that I should watch as a complete beginner? So... I'll go through what I think everybody should be looking at, and I think a lot of you haven't or don't, or just kind of skim through and don't take your time, which is pick a, a tried and true anatomy book, whether you and, and find the kind of style you like, roughly, right? So look at Andrew Loomis, figure drawing for all it's worth, I believe it's called, or uh, George Bridgman. Uh, the newest one that I, I recommend all the time is Figure Drawing, Design and Invention by Michael Hampton. And actually, you know what? Let me just make a note. I might make a video and I'll make a blog post as well. So you guys can always go back and I can just point you back at this. Uh, make video, blog post. Uh, anatomy, books, and other books. Uh, so yeah, check out those books. The number one thing you can do, to be absolutely honest with you, is it's it's a time thing. You're going to be doing this for the rest of your life, so just get excited <laughs> and uh, just realize that drawing every day for as long as you can, for as much as you can, is always going to reap benefits. Uh, that's not to say all you should ever do your whole life is just draw. I'm a like I used to do that for a while. Every now and then, I would maybe go to like a comic book store or go to like a magic tournament like a magic video or uh, the card game and stuff and uh, play some video games and all that stuff and there's nothing wrong with doing any of that stuff at all just uh just remember that the more you can draw the better you'll get faster and as long as you're continually looking for new anatomy books new uh, artists to look at copy what they draw on your own don't copy what they do for your production stuff or if you're getting paid for it just draw 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 that's the cure it's kind of like saying if you're overweight exercise it's uh, what is it eat less maybe not really it depends what you're doing anyway just do what you want as much as you can and try to get over the I don't feel like it today it's very difficult if you've got a very stressful life but if you can find a way to do that that's that's the best thing you can do and I know it's such a uh, it's not even really an answer but uh, it's the truth. If The more people you ask, they'll all say roughly the same thing. It's just draw. And keep trying to find something else that sings to you, that sort of you can look at and go, okay, that's what I want to draw. Don't just necessarily look at Loomis and Bridgman because that's what everybody says you need to look at. I don't subscribe to that sort of thing. I'm a big believer of honestly just looking at loom like know that you're going into these things that people are teaching you how to draw and uh, they might not be the best they might not uh, be something you like but give it a shot and see if it rubs off on you that's about the best I could say and yeah like equalizer saying definitely read the book don't just draw the pictures I know it's very tough uh, as artists we all that's what we want to do just draw get to the pictures and draw draw and you it's kind of like uh, if you look at a book and <laughs> you kind of get stuck in that um, I need to read the beginning middle and the end like it's a like a book like a chapter one chapter two chapter three right and you get this mentality that you got to read every page so as artists it's like we pick up this book and it's like I need to get to that back cover as soon as possible so what you do is you're like draw the picture for the page draw the picture for the page draw. and that's not necessarily the best way to spend your study time it's more so look at it apply it and don't leave until you understand it okay so for the first thing you're doing is gestures gestures seem very easy but until it feels easy I don't want to say all you do is gestures until your head explodes, but like if you're going to read an anatomy book, I highly, highly suggest that you you spend some some time with it. 
carve out some time to really go over it. Spend years, if you have to, going over the same book. And that might not be something you want to hear, but it's going to take that. Some people, it's longer than others. Some people, it's uh, it's not as brutal. I'll use myself as an example because I've, I've told you guys this. Once this project's done, uh, besides my personal comic stuff or projects that I want to do, uh, I'm very excited and pumped to get back into doing some homeschooling of anatomy and other things, perspective, and just tightening up. You know, I, I think after time, no matter how good you are, there's always, always going to be room to uh, for Jello. Is that a, there's always room for J E L L O. There's always room to improve and get better. And, and don't think that uh, because you looked at an anatomy book, you know it. Okay. Because I can guarantee you'll always go through there and you'll see how they do a line and you're like, ah, that line. Nice. I like that. Uh, Equalizer is saying, uh, Bridgman's Intense. It was written long ago. You may not even understand what he writes. Yep, there's there's that too. There's definitely that too. Okay, so just trying to gesture in here. Like, this character here is supposed to be protecting some civilians. So we kind of want to have her protecting some civilians. <laughs> So I'm just sort of like figuring out where some of this is going to go. Uh, it's actually kind of a hot mess. Let me see if I can just lower some of this garbage, this noise back here. Uh, Large is saying, I saw an interview with a Danish singer, and she, and he, a, he was asked how he could continue to write one hit after another. His reply was, I allow myself to write all the songs I can't use for anything. I think it applies to drawing as well. That's a, that's a great, great quote. You know what's another little thing that I like to do, guys? You guys can check it out. See if it works for you. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I like to listen to a lot of like the self-help kind of stuff, but also go into things that you might not necessarily think of as self-help. So an example would be Gordon Ramsay. I'm f I'm f I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So what I'll do is sometimes I'll just put on like Hell's Kitchen in the background, and you got to remember, right? Like it's TV, so it's played up pretty, pretty dramatically. They want you watching over and over again, right? But what I'll do is it's sort of like a coach kind of in the background. Anytime he's giving people shit about how how much their cooking sucks or how could you be that stupid, just take everything he's saying as food and just replace it with the word art, drawing, that sort of thing, right? Like. When he does his little stupid things like you sent this food out raw, it's like you you're you're you you're drawing right now without cooking it, without taking the time to put the the uh, structure in. You know, you're you're just jumping right to the anatomy. You're jumping right. You're not spending the time uh, to to cook it to make it as best as it can be. You know, you're just rushing it out because you got too many orders, or in, in our case, you got too many pages to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing you can try. I, I know it definitely doesn't work for everybody. Uh, my brother and I, we get a kick out of it. He does a lot of graphic design uh, in that sort of realm. But uh, we do the same same thing. We'll listen to it from time to time. And uh, it might sound kind of weird to do that too. I don't know. Try it out. See, if, see what you think. But the point, I was, the point I was trying to make with that was uh, go to, like, other sources, even though it's not art, and just sort of, like, listen to what they say. Listen to how they discipline people. Like, listen to uh, – one time I was listening to this stuff, it was uh, weight trainers. It was just people recording uh, them in a training session with, like, a very aggressive, almost militant uh, fitness trainer. And holy sh – you guys, like – Hey, you fat blank, you know, like, push harder, you you know, it just trash talk almost. And to some people, it's too much. They don't like that sort of motivation. And to some people, they get a little angry by it. And some people, just, that's what you like, you know. You, you like that aggressive nature that you might not get from your friends or whoever you show your art to. Like, I know a few art buddies myself uh, in real life and online where we'll talk and they get bummed out, which is fine. I mean, that's you're working so much right but you work and you work and you work and there's always like that feeling of like when is my time when is it that i'm gonna get 
picked up or when is it that so and so is going to see my stuff or what else do I need to do to get better like this is all I'm doing is drawing all the time and I'd never get out of it it's like sometimes you just need to hear even though it's not you know there's no like art coach that, that I know of that does this but you just hear somebody say like you know you know, I'm going to swear here and stuff. It's like, don't be a fucking pussy. Get up and stop being a bitch. You know, you hear all these other people. You look around you, all these other people drawing and working and lifting weights and getting muscular and stuff. You see them crying. You see them moping around, just going like, oh, why don't I? Like, get over it. Get over it. Stop doing that. Be a man. Be a woman. Grow up a spine, you know? Nobody does this sort of thing. It just expects the coast. Actually, I should take that back. I think a lot of people do this stuff, and I'm and I'm one. I, I don't want to seem like I'm just attacking. I'm definitely there too. Where it, uh, you know, I felt that where it's like I've been drawing for years, and like I don't really necessarily feel like I feel like I draw better than I did back then, but I, I don't necessarily feel like I have the. Uh, the is it the celebrity? Is that the word I want to use? The celebrity or the? Uh, oh well, so and so knows me, and that it's a very in my opinion, a uh, very poisonous way to think. And I'm, I'm so glad that I don't think like that anymore. But, uh, you know, it happens to all of us, I think. We've all got some sort of way where it's just like, you know, like just because I put an X amount of time, just because I draw for 12 hours a day, that means I should get something from that. And that's totally wrong. That's That's totally wrong, you know? So how do we get in talking about that? How do we... <laughs> If you stop practicing, you're dead. That's right. That's right. What I'm going to do here, and I'm going to actually see, uh, whatever, sometimes like, because I, I put ads on these videos for, uh, let me save it. I put ads on here for, uh, on YouTube. And because of that, I can't listen to music. So you guys have to, that's why there's no ever pre-show is really recorded, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a clip. You guys might, you guys can listen to this, okay? You let me know what you think. Maybe you've listened to it before. I uh, had a wallpaper, now that I'm talking about it, I might want to switch it back, where it was a quote from Arnold Schwarzenegger talking about horsing around and, and working and stuff like that, okay? Um, so... It's it's about a, I think it's like a three or four minute clip. I'll keep you know drawing. I hope if you guys you guys better have sketchbooks out. You guys better be working on projects. I hope, <laughs> and you're just drawing, listen to me and stuff like that. But just listen to this uh, little uh, thing that um, Arnold, our good friend, Mr. Schwarzenegger, whatever you think of him, whatever you think of him. Some people don't like him. That's totally cool. You're allowed to be like that. However, I just want you to listen to and, and uh, yeah, I, I'll get a, I'll get the jokes out of the way right now where it's okay. We're going to listen to him, but I don't know what the hell he's saying anyway. Do your best. Just do your best to listen to it, okay? So we just try to pull it up in the background here. And just listen to the words. And I, what I find reassuring about this is it's very uplifting. It's very motivational. But it's just, it's it's being honest and it's being brutal. And it's just, you know, getting real with yourself. Because a lot of people aren't going to tell you the way it is. And when they do, most of us don't want to hear it all the time. Even though you need to hear it all the time. And you start to get your walls up and you don't ask for it anymore. So I find listening to this sort of thing from time to time is sort of like a, a kick in the butt and a little refresher. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, let's see if we can find it. I mean, this video has been floating around everywhere. Let me find it. Is it no pain, no gain? Is that sounds about right? 12 million views, it might be it. All right, just let me see if this is it, guys. It's got this music when it starts. No. I apologize. This is going to take a little bit here. Oh, this might be it. I think the person just changed their uh, thumbnail image. No. Okay, so uh, just give me one more second here. I'll find it here. I because I know I made a blog post on my website for it. So let's pull it up from there. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's scroll all the way down here. Do, 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 do. All right, oh 
man, there's <laughs> there's some articles and stuff I wrote, I wrote on my site that I totally even forgot. I don't even remember these. There it is. Okay. Uh, providing this uh, video works, it's who do you want to be in life? That's it. Okay, so you might have to adjust your speakers. I'm just going to give you a little heads up now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play it. And uh, it's about three minutes, four minutes. So we'll be uh, back to that. And then we can talk about it. And yes, uh, okay, so Pillowhead saying something too, and I agree. Uh, there's a, well, Rocky Balboa, that's a, if you, ever, if you haven't watched Rocky, I actually just watched Rocky, the whole series, for the first time last year. Fantastic, man. Oh, my God. Now it's uh, my, one of my favorite series, and I'm, I'm so glad I got a chance to, to watch it. Anyway, we're going to listen to this, and uh, then we'll come back. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I didn't want to just be a bodybuilding champion. I wanted to be the best bodybuilder of all times. Dig deep down and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Not what, but who. I'm talking about figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy. You have to think outside the box. That's what I believe after all. What is the point of being on this earth? If all you want to do is be liked by everyone and avoid trouble. We have so many rules in life about everything. I say break the rules, not the law, but break the rules. I remember that after I was finished with my bodybuilding career, I wanted to get into acting. I wanted to be a, a star in films. Everyone had the same mind that it can't be done. Just look at your body. You have this huge, monstrous body, overly developed. that doesn't fit into the movies. But, uh, you know, I didn't listen to all this. This were their rules. I was convinced I could do it. And then I got the big break in Conan the Barbarian. Trust yourself no matter how, what anyone else thinks. And there the director said, if we wouldn't have Schwarzenegger, we would have to build one. Then when I did Terminator, I'll be back. One of the most famous lines in the movie history, all because of my crazy accent. It just shows you never listen that you can't do something. Don't be afraid to fail. Anything I've ever attempted, I was always willing to fail. Don't be afraid of making decisions. You can't be paralyzed by fear of failure, or you will never push yourself. You keep pushing because you believe in yourself and in your vision. And you know that it's the right thing to do. Success will come, so don't be afraid to fail. I mean, how many times have you heard that you can't do this, and you can't do that, and it's never been done before? So pay no attention to the people that say it can't be done. I would have listened to the naysayers, I would still be in the Austrian Alps yodeling. I would never have come to America. I always listened to myself and said, yes, you can. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. Work your butt off. I always believe leaving no stone unturned. No pain, no gain. When you're out there, partying, washing around, someone out there at the same time is working hard. Someone is getting smarter and someone is winning. Just remember that. success with your hands in the pocket. Okay, cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, <laughs> listening to it again myself, uh, it's, man, it's inspiring. And Donald's saying, and I, and I agree to, uh, the most important line in that thing uh, is while you're out there partying, 
horsing around, someone else is working hard, someone's getting better, that whole thing, right? And uh, there's, uh, I think there's an argument that goes both ways, and I can understand both sides of like, but you can't draw all the time, right? Like, you need some life, whatever, it's your life, do it however you want. Some artists say they need to go travel to see the world, bring it back on their art. I wish you all the best if that's what you feel like you need. And I, I think that's one of the, uh, I don't know if it's like a maturity thing or if it's just finding out, it's more like your voice. Like what is it about you that you love about art that you, that gets you pumped about it? Is it just all high action? Is it the story? Is it, what, what kind of gets you your butt in the seat? You know, what is it that you can, that you kind of do? And maybe some people it is traveling and, and asking questions and meeting people. And then uh, there's a lot of us too that just prefer, you know what, just let me draw all day, every day, and, and you'll be happy. And, and I don't think that's a, that's a bad thing. Like, a, uh, you know, somebody's going to say something silly like, well, you know, if all you do is you stay inside your little little house or your little apartment or wherever you live. And, and, and you don't find what your voice is. I don't necessarily believe that. Again, I think everybody's got a different story. Everybody's got their own story to tell. Uh, not necessarily like in a comic book sense, but like your own life kind of story, right? So just do your thing. Be you. Just have fun doing what it is that you guys do, right? And just, uh, no matter what, it's going to come down to drawing. <laughs> so uh, that one little quote with Arnold, I'll play this other clip somebody else is uh, asking too. Um, you know, that... I forgot, I forgot where we were going there. You guys are asking questions here. Uh, Equalizer is saying, John, do you find when you go out you're still drawing in your head? Um, I d no, I, like I don't. I've, I've said this before as well, that I'm, I, I, knew, I do have friends that are like this and that are like what you're saying, uh, where they can see something before they draw it. Like if I was going to draw like this next, we're going to draw somebody here right now, okay? Of uh, Hey, Jessup. How you doing, buddy? Uh, drawing like this... this uh, person that this hero's rescuing, right? I have an idea of where they're going to go, but I don't see the anatomy. I don't see any of that stuff. I don't have that, that sight that some people talk about. I'm envious of it. A lot of people, they can go like, oh, I'm going to draw Spider-Man swinging through the city, and they just kind of take a second, and they see Spider-Man swinging. Uh, I'm more, for me, it's more like I get down there, and this doesn't work all the time, and a lot of the time, it's like, it's not, the art doesn't get better because of it, or the art doesn't feel necessarily more impressive or anything from it but it's just like I I need to just feel this out like as I'm going here I'm just gonna start drawing this guy or whatever and just see where it kind of goes with I, what I know what his feeling what the emotion supposed to be from him and that's about it I can't do that uh, that vision thing however in saying that um, you know I do when I'm Let's say for a weekend, I'm just hanging out with family or something. I'm going to take the weekend off. And I, I actually don't like even saying that. I get to kind of get upset a little bit about it. <laughs> but there's tons of times where it's just like, you know, let's just relax. Have some time off. Just You've done so much, just relax. And uh, it usually lasts maybe, I don't know, half a day. Uh, but ultimately, I'll always come back to drawing on the brain like I should be working. Not necessarily working for somebody else or working, but like working as in like I should have at least a sketchbook in my hand and, 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 and draw. I just feel like, you know, the drawing all the time, uh, for me anyway, is, is actually really important. Uh, it was a, uh, a rock while I was growing up. Uh, when you know, I, I don't know if everybody's got troubles growing up or whatever, but uh, art for me was something that I could always escape to. And, uh, and because of that, uh, I'm very comfortable just going and doing that for a long time. Now, I can't do it forever. I do get burnt out. I do experience that from time to time. However, uh, you know, you got to find a balance in some way. But for me, I like to heavily lean on just defaulting to uh, art is right. Make art and you'll be, you'll be okay, okay? Uh, I'm going to play that clip, I promise. Uh, just Donald saying some sweet stuff here, just want to say. Uh, Donald, uh, just wanted to add, you can't draw all the time, but you want to make it but if you want to make it, you need to draw whenever you can. People have jobs and responsibilities, but whenever it's a choice. Uh, w oh, whenever it is a choice, you should draw. Because when you're playing Magic the Gathering or Grand Theft Auto, someone else is drawing. 
Uh, we can all make we can make excuses all day long. I have a full time job, etc. But to quote Brian Bendis, do you want to come home from work and relax, or do you want to come home and work? Because the guy who, that wants to work will get to work before the guy that plays, and that's beautiful. That's uh, it's very it's a scary way of looking at it. You know, how much work do you need to do? <laughs> to get where you want to be. It's it's a uh, I mean I know we're all over the map tonight. We're just I don't know where this stuff sort of just starts flowing, but I like it. This is, it's, it's jazzy, you know. I'm glad you guys are into it because like it sounds like, you know, it's not just me and my my head that just starts like I don't get inside my own head and just start going like maybe I'm thinking too much about this. Maybe the, if I'm starting to think like this, maybe I do need some time off. It's pretty deep. Not not deep, but like I could be just thinking about other fun stuff, you know, like, oh, it's just cool and uh, muscles and stuff, right? Like, instead of thinking, like, all right, well, I need to do the best I can on this project here, and then when I'm done, I'm going to do some YouTube stuff, I'm going to do some Castle Dracula, you know, like, all this stuff where your mind just doesn't stop. Um, sometimes it feels a little overburdening at times, but uh, I'm glad to hear this. A lot of you guys are... Uh, no, Donald, don't, hey, I'm, I'm ranting, this whole thing's been a rant, I'm surprised you guys are even here listening to me talk, uh, everybody's opening up here, and this is great, um, Matter is saying, uh, fear is why I think I can't take that next step, that's real, that is a real thing, equalizer, uh, well, that stuffs me, uh, I work from home, there you go, uh, equalizer saying, fear leads to hate, <laughs> leads to the dark side. Uh, Pillow saying uh, he's not gonna lie. He drew so much today that he's gonna take tomorrow off and do yard work. You gotta kind of do that. Uh, I actually did that last weekend. Um, it was just I'm like, you know what? I know I have stuff I have to do around the house. I'm just gonna take the day off, and uh, and I didn't draw at all that day. You know, there are times when you don't draw every day, uh, even though the motto is draw every day, and uh, it was actually really uh, refreshing. You know, some of us need it from time to time. As long as you're doing something productive with it. I, like for me, uh, maybe I'm just older, but like sitting down and just like plowing through Netflix or playing a video game all day like I it's great for first little bit and then after a while it's just ugh, like I feel disgusting almost um, okay so let me just play that one clip here I, I believe this one is the Rocky Balboa one and we're getting close to wrapping the show up here so make sure there's no ads uh, there's always ads Rocky Balboa, motivational, inspirational speech to son. This one's four minutes too, so hopefully you guys get a kick out of it. And then we'll go back to the chat, and then we'll uh, start to wrap this up. Oh, look who's here. Is this the father? the back. You're doing good. You're enjoying everything, all right? Excuse me. How you doing? Glad you come by. Can I talk with you? Sure. Can you do it outside? So you're going through with this? Yeah, I start trading tomorrow. Hey, Rob. I made some connections. I could make some money on this endorsements. Absolutely, do that. Thank you, Rob. Sure. OK. So you nervous about the fight? They're scared to death. You don't look scared? Well, you ain't supposed to. Then you don't have to do it. Yeah, well, I think I do. Y you know, living with you, it hasn't been easy. People see me, but they think of you. Now with all this going on, this is going to be worse than ever. It don't have to be. No, sure it does. Why? You got a lot going on, kid. Oh, what, my last name? That's the reason I got a decent job. That's the reason why people deal with me in the first place. Now I start to get a little ahead. I start to get a little something for myself, and this happens. Now I'm asking you as a favor not to go through with this, OK? This is only going to end up bad for you, and it's going to end up bad for me. You think I'm hurting you? Yeah, in a way you are. It's the last thing I ever wanted to do. I know that's not what you want to do, but that's just the way that it is. Don't you care what people think? Doesn't it bother you that, that people are making you out to be a joke and that I'm going to be included in that? Do you think that's right? Do you? Who 
You ain't gonna believe this. Well, you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up and say to your mother, this kid's gonna be the best kid in the world. This kid's gonna be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching you. Every day was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that, and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what. No matter what happens. You're my son. You're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't gonna have a life. Don't forget to visit your mother. Fuck, I love those movies. <laughs> so good. Well, thanks for sharing that. So, I, to kind of cap, recap it all together, I think you guys kind of get it. Again, I, I'll have to re-listen to this because I have no idea how we started even talking about this. <laughs> but I'm glad we talked about it. It's always good to kind of have this punch in the face every now and then just to kind of wake you up, you know, and just get you back on track. So if if it helped anybody out, awesome. So that's the whole point. If you're on YouTube and you're watching this and it helped you out, leave a little comment below. So I don't think uh, you guys are going to get... Oh, no, thank you. I I'd definitely be checking that out too. Yeah. So we're going to wrap the show up. It's been an hour, if you guys can believe it. That went by way too fast, like it always does. And I just want to say thank you guys. Once again, you guys are amazing. Um, I've said twice so far, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to have to go back and listen to how we got back into this. But this is what I love, and this is as, as much as you guys might feel like I'm helping you out I never mean to say this in a conceited way, but I'm helping you guys out or you guys have a good time coming here. What I get out of this too, I feel like I'm stealing from you guys and you girls out there. Just seeing how I am rambling and you guys hear me rant and just talk and you guys just get to type on a keyboard and stuff. I'm the one with the speaker, so you know you got to listen to this if you want to. But just being able to see where these conversations can go is insane. It's, it's, it's highly motivational and... As cheesy and as lame as it might sound, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for helping participate in all this. It means the world to me. And if if I if we're able to spread this um, inspiration and motivation to you guys in the chat and anybody that's watching later, what what what's better than that? You know how hard it is to just sit down and draw. It's not right. You just gotta sit down and draw. But the hard part is sitting down and draw. Uh, I forget who said that. I heard it a while ago. I just always thought it was fun. Uh, it's such a it's a good analogy. It's uh, not hard to sit down and draw, but the hardest thing is sitting down and draw. So that mixed with this sort of like little kick in the butt from time to time, I think is is pretty cool. So and I, and I really do like how it or like it's felt anyway that it organically came out. Anyway, so 
we're going to say bye-bye to everybody. I appreciate you coming by. And if you're in the chat and you came in towards the end here, or if you're watching on YouTube, this show is every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are in the chat right now uh, and you came at the end, just look at your clock, subtract an hour, um, make a little notification in your calendar uh, for next Wednesday, and you can check that out. Or if you're here on Picardo.tv, you can click the subscribe link at the top, and uh, you'll get an email notification roughly when the stream kicks on. Uh, we do do a little pre-show in the beginning, so hopefully you'll get a notification by then. And the last little thing I will say about, excuse me, my wonderful patrons, thank you so much. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate uh, any help you guys are giving me uh, or just saying thank you. All of that's awesome. There's a new show that's on there uh, called Sketchbook Mondays. Uh, updates every Monday, uh, which is sketchbook kind of stuff where I talk with uh, the community on Patreon. And if you guys aren't my patrons, that's cool too. Uh, those videos will be uploaded a month after they're uploaded on Patreon. Whew, what a mouthful. So, you guys, I, I'm going to leave you here. And uh, like every week, I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. And... Thank you guys so much. Keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll see you then. Good night.